Northern Virginia to be exact. Welcome to another edition of Redskins Relaunch. I'm your host, Winston Hilton. You can get at me at Sports Talk. Boom, right there. NC8, go ahead and check that out. We're on we're on the Twitter sphere. We uh, our promotions department um, put out some crazy videos uh, to hopefully spark your interest. Um, you know, namely a baby uh, dancing to Uncle Luke. Uh, uh, all you have to do is say "Baby Uncle Luke," and you. I mean, come on, you got to click on it. For those that don't know who Uncle Luke is, Google him or Yahoo him. Okay, please do. Really good stuff. All right. So look, it is. Week one, we're finally here. No more of the boring Januaries and Februarys, even though those are playoff times. But Redskins fans know that we were sitting at home drinking somebody else's Kool Aid, not able to partake in any playoffs. But we had, we got through March, we got through April, we got through May, June training camp, the whole nine, and it's finally, it's finally here. Week one, Eagles, Redskins, Sunday, one o'clock. It's finally, finally here. Thank goodness. All right, look, we got some things to go over the show. Basically, no trend still. Mm, what's going on? Sooner rather than later was something that somebody said earlier this week. We'll talk about that later on. Um, do we have any faith in case? No, I'm not saying do you have faith in case. I'm talking about do you have faith in case? Keenum, that is. Um, cuts made. Were you shocked by some of the cuts that were made? Um, a lot of people were, some weren't. Um, again, Eagles are up next. We got to go over the keys to the game. Um, you know, basically, Jay Gruden said the ball's pretty much going to be rolling through one guy. That guy is, we'll talk about that later. Over under, I want to know, the Redskins defense is supposed to be really good this season, right? So what is our over under on sacks against the Eagles this week? Are we talking four, five? What is your over under? want to get your thoughts on that. Plus, some big trades in the NFL before the season uh, started. Jadavian Clowney goes to the Pacific Northwest. We'll talk about that, plus some other NFL news. Um, we'll talk about the Nationals. A huge, huge, huge win last night on Tuesday, and then they backed it up with a gutter ball. Um, Rui Hachimura, uh, he's kind of beasting over at, uh, in FIBA. Um, and guess who had a baby? Somebody on the Wizards team uh, not named John Wall. Um, Howard. I guess we do have to kind of go over that, even though that's that's my guy, uh, Coach Ron Prince over at Howard. Um, he took a he took a bad one on Saturday in College Park. Well, we'll we'll, we'll definitely have to go over that. Uh, Coach Mike Loxley, a great job for him and his Terrapins. But before we get started on the show with the Redskins, I wanted to bring in our guest, who is no stranger to the Redskins. She hosts Twenty Six Minutes podcast with. Clinton Portis. <laughs> she also hosts Buckets, Boards, and Blocks. She also is a college basketball analyst all over the place. ESPN, Fox Sports 1, uh, ESPN W, ESPN 2, ESPN 3, 4, the Elcho, all of that. Jeez. Her name, if you don't know in certain circles, Georgetown, former Georgetown Hoya star, Monica McNutt. McNutts, what's up? Yo. What's happening? You're looking extra... Look at the hair. The hair is glistening. I'm telling you. Look at that. There. Look, boy. You got, the, you got the juices and berries Good. in there today. I'm trying to stay oil shamed up. Yes. You know, shea butter, baby. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no soul glow today. I got you. I got you. All yeah. right. Um, so tell us what else you have going on. I, I, like I said, I know you do 26 minutes. Wh what is that like? You know, so it's funny. Coming up in the game, you know of freelancers. Long time former freelance dude, Ben Standig, we all know and love. Yes. And I used to always admire Standig because he had so many different places. A Jamaican at heart. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. But I get it yes. now at this point in my career where I am hustling and chasing checks myself. So, yeah, the podcast with the Redskins, 26 Minutes with Clinton Portis, we recorded an episode today. Fantastic. Episode 49. Encourage you to check it out. We're going to get into it. I will give you some previews of yes. one standout Pro Bowl, all pro running back that used to wear 26, had thoughts on the current guy that wears 26. Mm. So that was fun. Um, yes. Then we got Buckets, Boards, and Blocks, my podcast with uh, Pure Hoops Media. Yes. All the Hoops podcast, but we come at it at all different angles. One of my favorite episodes so far has actually been Nate Burleson. Okay. Who came on and had some hilarious stories about high school Gilbert Arenas. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. So that Hibachi. 
Okay. Yeah, man, out there again in the Pacific Northwest doing their thing. Um, ESPN, FS1, college basketball, men's, women's, doing some stuff, NBA content with MSG Networks up in New yes. York around the Knicks this summer and coming up this season. So I'm super excited. Got my hands in all types of pots. You know I, what I'm saying? I've, I've seen DJ you on the MSG Pistino. thing, and I'm like, it looks you know, like y'all are arguing, having fights and everything. What's fantastic okay don't it's great energy. look i can't i don't have to, i don't want to have to bail you out of jail because you beat somebody up I, listen i am restrained i keep my hands to myself Woo-sah. but trust me i get to yapping Woo-sa. Woo-sa. <laughs> calm it down a little bit there big pimping calm it down all right look so earlier this week um on his podcast d'angelo hall uh speaking with uh, another good friend aaron hawksworth on the Hail to the Podcast podcast on Athletic. That's a lot of podcasts in there. Hail to the Podcast P- podcast. podcast. Boom. It. I like that. It's like a double up. Um, so he basically inferred, he said, you know, Trent's basically going to come back sooner rather than later. This is after a couple of weeks where he said, you know, he talked to Trent. Trent said, no way. What in the world is going on with this situation? Do you, uh, Okay. Let me rephrase the question. Do you have... <laughs> Have you spoken to anybody with a little bit more insight? Because, you know, I, you know, look, it's enough of the he said, she said. I graduated from high school a long time ago. I ain't mm-hmm. for that anymore. Mm-hmm. I need to hear from the horse's mouth. Mm-hmm. So at this point, unless homeboy comes out and says, I am or I am not, we're just waiting. I have not had a conversation with Trent. Uh, okay. Or would, who would be on the other side? Bruce? No, not you privy. You talk to Bruce. To a or conversation with those It could guys. be a third party, you know, nah. maybe... Nah, I nope. mean, I, I'm in the <laughs> same boat as you in terms of analyzing and overanalyzing how many, like, at this point, we need to get a inflection voice coach detector mm. to uh, parse out whether or not they detect levels of faith in what D'Angelo Hall is saying. Yes. Because this is the one thing I will say in this organization for a long time, I feel like has been kept close to the vest and been vaulted to a degree. And it has not seemed to really be open. Nobody. I mean, D'Angelo Hall is as best as we've gotten in terms of actually hearing from Trent. Yes, absolutely. Other than Morgan Moses, who is, you know, he's, he has his rose colored glasses on, which is fine. That's his his teammate. He's under contract. So, so it's not like Morgan Moses. Exactly. is still an active player. So, yeah. no, he doesn't yeah, count. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At least D. Hall is like doing his thing. NFL Network, The Athletic, NBC Sports, Washington, whatever. Coming over he's, to our side. Yes, yes. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got his foot in, but he still has got a f- his foot out. So, that, you know, but gosh, it's, it's almost like if at this point, what are, what is the team supposed to do? What are fans supposed to do? Because, you know, you, you have to get tired of hearing this every single day. Is he, isn't he, is he, isn't he? At some point, the players just have just got to say, let's roll with so, what we got. And that's sports, I think, in general. The cliche is next man up, but the cliche is also very factual. Donald Penn, hmm, <laughs> all right. I mean, we can deal with the logistics, the actual talent level at that position. But if Trent is not coming back, what are we? We can continue to mm, language. We can continue to moan about it. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Or we could just move on. And so. At this point, do you want to see Trent back? Sure. And if you're fans, do you respect the body of work that and the commitment that he's demonstrated for this team? Sure. But also, you got to deal with who's on the field now. Right. Right. And it's, it's Here's, just... But this is my thing, and this is what we talked about a little bit on the podcast. Is this all for not? Like, at what point does money just become a factor? You stand to lose 800000 to a million dollars a game, whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. You know, that's regular folks. I, I'll be there. Yeah. Ready, ready to you go. You know what? I don't even like you, but <laughs> I'm going to be there. I don't yes. know if $13 million is enough to make him move off of this hill. Like, is that the hill you want to die on? And then if you come back and nothing has changed, we did all this for what? Just to miss training camp. Just to miss training camp. And then the, the other part for me is, while Trent is a standout at, at his position, is that a position that commands what we've seen from running backs? Mm-hmm. I, I'm asking. Uh, right. I, I, don't, I don't think so. Although Trent, again, he's more accomplished than a Le'Veon Bell. He's more accomplished than a Ezekiel Elliott who just also got paid. So in that aspect, you would see him being able to, you know, get that money that he's desiring, if he even desires the money. Yes, however, so much of the game is geared toward offense. Correct. And Trent is, in real life, he's young. What is he, 31? Yes, in real life, he's young. In, in real life, he's young. In, in NFL, life, he's 95. <laughs> 
I'm just yes. saying. My yes. man about to be in a wheelchair. Yeah, but that's all right. Look, I'm a, I'm a juice everything that I can out of this orange until it's until it's gone. So I, at this point, you know, yes, he's had crazy injuries. He's you know he's dealt with suspensions and what have you. But all in all, is he? Are do you have a plan B? And that that's always been my thing with the Redskins. Do they have a plan B for Trent if he does not show up? And if Donald Penn is your plan B, plan I mean, C, plan calling R. plan C. Look, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm no football expert, but I'm I have to probably say that I probably would take the Trent Williams plan over the plan. Yeah, I guess you can't really say plan B. That's probably not good. <laughs> we yeah, let's let's x that out of the conversation, out of the vocab. Let's just go. <laughs> The other plan. I'm not in there. No, no more the plan alternative. B. Yes, there you go. Boom, alternative. Mm-hmm. So uh, hopefully that, that situation works itself out, and he basically did not hold out just to miss training camp, which I don't I – don't, actually, I don't blame him for doing that either because do you think the Redskins would really find him if he ended up coming back right now with his head between his head uh, tail? Do you really find him? A la Oakland? It's a Gruden thing. You wouldn't Do you understand. you find him? <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. I would not be surprised, but no. I the re, It would be a Redskin thing to do to find him. Right. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, for real? Peace. No, um, you have the power to find him, but for what? For, get, exactly. Get that man you, back on the team. Yeah. At that point, you know, I like I said, if that was his whole deal and he just wanted to miss out on training camp, fine. Here's what I will say. And this was why I encourage folks to check out 26 Minutes with Clinton Please Bordis, do. episode 49. Boom. Today we had a conversation about what you're saying to the other 52 guys on the roster. Mm-hmm. Particularly we were talking about the running back deal, which we'll get into. But I think it's the same thing here. If Trent has been loyal, productive, has represented the organization well, money talks get hairy on both sides. We work it out. He's back in the locker room. And then there's a fine in his locker? Yeah. What does yeah. that say to our youth movement that everybody is so excited about, about your long-term tenure, potentially, with this organization? Like, what does that say? It says petty much. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, is, exactly. that, is that what you want to give Base, new, that's, right Come on, on man. We've been working toys. with this for 20 years. Petty much? All right, look. We got to take a break. <laughs> um, we'll start talking about the... Game plan going into the Eagles, as well as more from uh, more tidbits and more nuggets from the 26 Minutes podcast. <laughs> um, we're here with Monica, Monica McNutt, host of several different podcasts. I'm your host, Winston Hilton. This is Redskins Relaunch, and we will be right back. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. Very 
All right, that was Jay Gruden talking about how he feels going into this season um, with his team. And you noticed a lot in that spot that he was talking a lot about his defense, uh, talking about Landon Collins, some of the additions that they made. Um, so he, obviously he knows where his strengths are. We are joined by Monica McNutt, a host of uh, 26 Minutes podcast with Clinton Portis on Reds, uh, with Redskins.com, as well as Buckets, Boards, and Blocks. I, you know what? That, God, that podcast name is just great. I, I, love, I love that one. I love that one. Shout out Buck- to my producer, Bruce Springsteen. B- B- Bruce Springsteen? Bernstein. I, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at that point, you might as well just go with it. Um, <laughs> all right, so we, we heard Jay talking about the defense. Let's hear him talk about the offense. And his tone is just a little bit different than what he talks about uh, with his defense. Offensively, you just because offensively you have to try to find a way to mesh. Find a way to get some big plays, plays and protect the football, uh, and 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 do some things. You know, it might be a little different here and there, but if we have to win 17-13, we'll win 17-13. You know, with a great defense. So, uh, just getting Case comfortable, getting the receivers around him comfortable, uh, find out status of Jordan. Obviously, uh, you know, is going to be important to us. So he just said, just getting Case comfortable, getting the receivers around him comfortable. Bruh, is, wait, isn't that what the preseason's for? Like, that's your time to get comfortable and get in sync and in rhythm. And we're going to do this against the Eagles on week one, against Malcolm Jenkins and, and all those guys? Like, yeah. That's why you play these guys in the preseason. Monica, I mean, I know you don't want to, you don't want to have these guys get hurt in preseason, but. I mean, that's why you do have, you know, exhibition games, the basketball, preseason games, bas- what gives? You know, we argued about whether or not preseason should be cut short or eliminated. That's that's a another hour podcast in and of itself. I do think, what, first, we'll give it three games of the season. There's mm-hmm. still a lot of kinks being worked mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Vegas will throw out their numbers, fantasy teams look however, and then we see teams sort of, see whether their preseason, off-season training camp is going to yield the results that they need. Um, I think I, – I don't – Jay is – I always look at Jay with a little bit – The side eye. I, not, I won't call it a side <laughs> eye, but I, I, I can never tell how much he actually controls. Mm. You know? So mm-hmm. I think for him to move with that soundbite for me, with a little bit of trepidation, not – wildly optimistic, understanding the task at hand, not overly confident, is warranted with this group. There's a lot of youth, and we haven't even talked about the quarterback deal. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. But, uh, again, he's played how many drives in the preseason? Uh, you know, but the pre- I, you know the preseason doesn't compare. True. But how much practice do you have to go through in order to get this sync and this rhythm? Obviously, you, you know that gameplay is going to be a lot different than practice. Mm-hmm. Even, even in the preseason, that, that play is going to be elevated uh, just a notch above practice. But when you get to game day, you're, low, you, you're on, on 100 already. Whereas preseason, you might go 80, 85, or what have you. Practice is like 60. They haven't been in sync at 100 yet. Exa- that's what I'm saying. Why not, get, why not get those reps in during the preseason? Because nobody does that. <sighs> and that's the problem. Right? You weren't that's even the on the field long enough that's, as a starting unit to get problem. those reps. That's the problem. That's that's exactly what I'm saying, especially for a team that always, historically, under Jay Gruden, has always gotten off to a slow start. Let's go back to some of the – let's go to – you know what? Let's go back into the archives. Into the time Into capsule. the time tunnel. Um, look, so how about this uh, record under Jay Gruden as far as season openers are concerned? Okay. Last year was a, was an ab- abomination. They won twenty four to six. Thanks, thank you, Adrian Peterson, who we'll also whoop get whoop. to. We'll also get to later on in the show. Um, the year before that, twenty seventeen. Guess who they lost to? I don't remember. The Eagles, thirty to seventeen. They looked horrible in that game. Didn't start off the right way. Uh, was Case? I mean, was Kirk was the quarterback? That was Kirk. Okay. Yes. Um, had a, I think it was a pick six. Ryan Kerrigan was the only one to score in that game. Um, the year before that. 30, a loss in 2016, lost 38 to 16 to Pittsburgh. First game, yuck. I, I believe that was a Monday night game. Yep. Yeah, Monday night game, horrible. Uh, 2015, under Jay, uh, 17 to 10 loss to Miami. Not good. Not good. 
the first year, 17 to six loss to Houston. That was RG three second year where uh, I want to say Niles Paul was open Niles near the Paul, Niles wow. Paul was open near the end zone and he got stripped as he was about to score. If I'm if I remember correctly, but yeah, those are your those are your Jay Gruden season openers. A total of 17, 16, 10, finish. six. I mean, uh, it's, it's about it, where you it, finish. It is not, it's not where about where you start. <laughs> it's not good. So then you can't blame him for sounding like that. Yeah, but again, we're we, in a results-driven industry. Well, I won results week one as well as week two, three, four through seventeen. How do we? How do we get off to a good start? How do other teams get off to a good start? And why can't we replicate that here in Ashburn? You know, if I can answer that, I think I'd You'd be, be a coach. Staff. Yes, I'd yes. Okay. I, okay, I will say, I would be curious to look at the teams that get off to a solid start and look at the established culture. Right. Do you have guys that have been in the system, that know the system, that are leaders of men that just refuse to lose? Like, who are mm. those head coaches? Mm. You just, you just, oh. Right? Are you going to church? I okay, mean, go let's ahead. Let's go to football yeah. church. Let's, let's go get to it. church. Let's okay. Get it. So I would be curious about that because I would also be curious to look at over the course of Jay's record, look at the continuity. We know we've had the quarterback position shuffle around. Mm -hmm. I still can't pinpoint a standout wide receiver that Jay has had. Deshaun Jackson was in and out. Pierre, Pierre Garçon was here for a year or two, two years. Yeah. And like for whatever reason, his production was not what it was under Shanahan. Mm -hmm. um, beyond those two, Josh just left. Uh, like I can't come on, give me give me another big time target. That's it. Safety blanket. That's we it. haven't had a healthy Jordan Reed. Nope. So there's a lot of things that I think play a role in that. Now at the end of the day, just win, baby. Like that's sports. Yes. But if we were gonna dissect and try to pinpoint why this team tends to get off to a slow start, I think there are a lot <laughs> of reasons to throw into that pot. Yes, absolutely. Um all right, let's get to I mean, you talked about the receivers. I mean <sighs> What is your confidence in Case? Do you think he can – okay, you know what the schedule is. Do you think he can steal maybe two wins out of these first five? Sure, why not? Okay, good. <laughs> I, I love the optimism. Uh, there are some of his numbers from last year. I mean, look, you have, you have the Eagles, Dallas, Patriots, the Bears. Uh, you, have a, you have a pretty rough five-game stretch. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Even what's – the, what's the sixth game? The Dolphins? Uh, right I believe so. One? As, what is that? Nick Nick is a man hitting the switches over there. Um, that six that I think it is the Dolphins. That game after the bye is that the Dolphins game? I think it's October seventeenth, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that oh, should I the bye that is, is that early? I thought the bye was a little bit later this year. No, but I think, okay, I think that bye is that's where they were gonna. That that was a whole buzz. Everybody was gonna Patriots after the, the Giants. And the so Dolphins. you need to include the Patriots ooh, and then ooh. the Dolphins. So it's six games. The first six games, oh, not dude, Jesus, not uh, oh. five. Forget yeah. About yeah, yeah, no, you, you can't forget about the Patriots. That's actually, you do want to forget about the Patriots because that's not going to be pretty. Yeah, so, page, so yeah, 17, you got it. Eagles, 8, Cowboys, 15, Bears, 23rd, Giants, 29th, Patriots, 6, mm. Dolphins, the 13th, and then I think the, it's the, the bye, bye week. Oh, oh, boy. That's, so here, I mean, here's, that's. Here's the thing. At this point in the season, everyone is undefeated. We love sports. Yay. Is there a scenario where I think Case can eke out two to three wins? Yes. Let me tell you what I think has to happen, though. Possibly the Bears. And they got to steal game one. Yeah. You gotta they get got to get game they one. Gotta, yeah, they, they absolutely have to. Then you need to be riding high off of that and let division magic happen and get the Cowboys, too. Yes. Protect home. That's your three. Do you take them ooh, three and three? You take them three L's? Mm, I probably. <laughs> I don't know. The Dolphins... Mm, maybe. Dolphins are going to be playing with house money. Nobody expects anything from no, them. No, exactly. And probably the same thing with the Redskins. Nobody's – look, USA Today uh, predicted them to go 3-13. Okay, so Dang. nobody's really expecting much out of this team anyway. So they may not be – you know, they might be that proverbial trap team that everybody's, you know, everybody's looking ahead to somebody else. That could be Washington on everybody's Except schedule. Except I don't think that's going to be the case in the first two games just because those it's are division games. It's the first, games. yes, exactly. And those are division games. So Ooh. is there a world where this can happen? Yes. I think, oh, God. <laughs> a lot of things have to come into play. Yikes. Yeah. But think about it. If the defense is as stout as we're projecting, led by one Jonathan Allen, right? Carson Wentz, 
This is the first time we've seen him healthy. Yes. He might have some dust he needs to wrinkle off, mm-hmm. right? Um, then you look at the Cowboys. I mean, who knows how this negotiation and this offseason thing has played into that team locker room camaraderie. Look, dude just came from Cabo. So he I'm might saying. be he might still have a little bit of tequila in the system. And not to <laughs> mention Zeke is going into what his third year, fourth year? Third? Uh, this will be third. Third year? Yeah. So he didn't have a sophomore slump, so to speak, but like he's going to be game planned for differently. Yes. And again, our defense is improved, right? So that's at home, even though RFK has a funny way of looking like a neutral site when they come to town. But anyway. Oh, you know. Um, sort of like Nats Park. We'll talk about I mean, that I'm too. saying, like, you get those two. I don't know about the Bears. Mm, that's a toughie. What's going on with the Giants? If you get Eli from last year, and yes. they do, they're they missing, what's my man that, that got traded from Seattle as their receiver? Um, Golden Tate. Golden yes, Tate. there you go. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, of off the top of my head, in terms of division matchups, I feel like Giants are the one that they – are probably They're, more evenly matched up with. Yes. The only one. That's great. That's good. That's good for the ego. Good for the good boost. Good good pep talk over here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of things have to fall into place. Yeah. You can't keep your defense on the field forever, right? So, and you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's three phases of the game. You're going to have to be able to get some things done. But what if Terry McLaurin turns out to be this, that, and the other? Right? What if Case, all he has to do is hit Terry and hit Jordan, and Jordan can stay healthy? And then we got guys moving the ball, AP moving the ball. Like, what if we just make it very simple? Yes, that would be something. But Jay has a tendency to make things overcomplicated that shouldn't be. That and not utilizing the talent that he has in the building. Well, Jay's seat is probably at about 104 degrees. Oh, oh, you could probably go higher than that. You think? Oh, no doubt. What do you, what do you begin to burn? Oh, put him, I don't know. Put him in the <laughs> oven with that turkey for Thanksgiving because he might be burnt up. When do you begin to burn? So this year, more than any other year, mm-hmm. um, maybe my little wrinkles and nuances have not worked in the past. Simplify, baby. And you have a rookie quarterback. Could have could have gone very yeah. simple. Could have gone very simple. All right, let's, let's take a break. We'll talk about some of the cuts from... Over the weekend for the Redskins, we'll also talk about who possibly sh- could have been cut had it been up to Jay Gruden. Oh that and more. I, oh, boy. Yeah, we got to talk about that. That and more as Redskins relaunch returns. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. 
a member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Evisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This Welcome back to Red Team's relaunch. I'm your host, Winston Hilton. Again, you can get at me on Sports Talk at, M at Sports Talk NC8. I'm still there, uh, loving life. Thank you very much for checking us out here on DMVStream.com's Facebook page, as well as on Twitter at DMVStream. Um, we are joined by Monica McNutt, uh, podcaster, uh, college, former college basketball super duper star as well as college basketball analyst. I did say college basketball, right? I didn't say mm -hmm. college football. Nope. You know, the, I, when you get older, the mind just kind of goes. It's all good. Um, you know, I mean, if you did k play college football. 2019. Bam. Well, I wouldn't have done it The Divas. <laughs> the Divas, they're here too. <laughs> they bout it. Oh, man. My man, Rich Daniel. That's my guy. Um, all right, so we got to talk about some of the cuts that happened uh, from the team, you know, team cut down from 90 to 53. Um, some of the guys that were uh, let go, like J.P. Hoyts and Holtz and some of these other guys, but some other guys we do know of that we talked about earlier on the show, which is Josh Doxson, now not no longer with the Redskins. He is now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, I thought he was with the Vikings. Vikings, I'm sorry. He's okay. teamed up again with Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Mm. He didn't throw him then. I don't know if he's going to throw it to him <laughs> now, but either way, he can go up to the cold and that – Dotson awesome. or Diggs? Who are you throwing to? I mean, he, Doxson, Diggs, Thielen, uh, Kyle Rudolph, yeah. Dalvin Cook. All of them. Bro, you might get five catches this year. In <laughs> any event. In practice. <laughs> uh, you know, basically. But, uh, you know, some of the other guys, P. Ryan, Samaji P. Ryan running back, Samaji P. Ryan, now with the Cincinnati Bengals. He was also cut. Uh, Cam Sims, uh, mm -hmm. receiver, promising receiver out of Alabama. He was cut, although he was signed to the practice squad. Uh, Jeremy Reeves who I thought actually played well in the preseason, um, you know, making plays at safety. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, with some of the guys, just numbers didn't work out for them as far as their positions were concerned. But <sighs> Monday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, on 106.7 The Fan, the Junkies, uh, they dropped a little nugget on everybody, basically speaking to a source that they know, that I don't know, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, they were speaking with a source saying that they had some uh, intel that Jay Gruden wanted to get rid of Adrian Peterson. Take a listen at the Junkies from Tuesday morning. All yeah, right. this is a, a good nugget. A well-placed source Yeah, that Jay did not want to keep AP. Well, there was an argument. There was an argument. Yeah. And it's because, not that AP's not productive, but AP doesn't like being a backup. Right. So AP. He's not a fan. AP likes to get in Jay's ear if he's not playing. Right. right? And Jay doesn't want to deal with it. So, okay. So you heard what they had to say about um, Adrian Peterson and, and Jay Gruden, that Jay likely wanted to uh, have Peterson as part of those cuts because he didn't want to hear AP's mouth as far as his playing time was concerned. Monica, you also talked about this uh, situation with another 26. Drop maybe a couple of nugget or two without giving the whole thing away so people would, uh, you know, check in to uh, 26 minutes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh. Bro, it was whoa. not me. It wasn't like, my decision. Ooh, ooh. Um, Clinton Portis is not about this at all. He's not. We didn't even discuss this part of it on the pod today. We just discussed the simple fact that Darius is set to get the start. Mm, okay. And so he's very much earning is better than being given and wants to know what AP did to lose his position. Yes. That part that the junkies are referring to? Jeez, these sources. See what I mean? How it's so impressive how closely this whole Trent Williams thing has managed to be kept. Mm-hmm. I don't want to believe that. Do you believe that? <laughs> the my own Nick, Nick, right here. <laughs> Nick, right here. Right here. Right here. Uh, hey man. I you cut a guy because you don't want to hear his mouth, but you're still gonna need him? That sounds like some high school stuff that goes on in it, it certain now professions. Now a, a <laughs> few other a few other marquee AM stations in the area were having this conversation today, and I, I love me some Doc. Doc's my guy. Oh, yeah. He's been a big supporter of mine since I got into this industry. He pointed out that it would appear there's an issue with alpha personalities, 
and the reference he used was DJ Swearinger last year. Mm-hmm. We were literally doing a podcast, and he was walking out the facility with all his crap. I was like, mm, what's going on? Wait, wait. Yeah. Now, while Doc used that example, I would use it to counter a little bit because the Swearinger thing kind of got strung along yes. through the course of the season yes. until it was the one last straw. Yes. So all of a sudden, we're not going to allow something maybe that could be an area of concern to just kind of string along because I know there's still value in you and now we're going to nip it in the bud and be left with no value? Thank you. Potentially? Hmm? Uh, we, what? Sway? Uh, wait, how, Sway? Huh? I, yeah, I mean, it, it just you just have to scratch your head because this is a guy that literally last week just went up on stage, picked up his offense 2018 MVP. team offensive MVP award at the Welcome Home Luncheon and now, I don't believe this. W- what? I don't believe this because of but, all of these things we're discussing. But again, Jay came out and said on Monday that they're going to run pretty much. Guys is going to get, I guess, a bulk of the. So carrots. you cut the dude altogether after he was honestly your godsend last year. Nah, I, I don't believe I, this is football. I, I this do is not, NFL football. I do not, not want to believe league. it. I don't want to believe it. Nah, but sure. that sounds like something that the <laughs> that's so Redskins. So here's my thing. When we make that <laughs> statement, so Redskins the whole kit and caboodle, or that's a Jay Gruden decision? It would have had to have been a Jay Gruden decision. Would it? I mean, we've He's, seen other look, decisions. Look, AP's, not, AP's not chirping at Bruce Allen on the sideline. That's Jay Gruden. Has an earful of AP right here. Play me, play me, play me, play me. How, how long are you going to be able to deal with that? I would. I would deal with it for, you know. As long as I needed to. The I dude definitely put in, the dude put up numbers. I love Darius. I think he is fantastic. He has a great personality. He's ready. He's chomping at the bit. I think he's can be very special. But you, ain't no way you cut AP until you see that you guy back? says that guy. Let's go. Are, you got the juice or not? Yes. And even yes. still, why? I don't see where having one dynamic back when you can have two dynamic backs, a la New Orleans. Let's see New Orleans. Let's see Kamar and Ingram. That's that's, I, that would be great. Let's, let's that would that. be great. But has J, does Jay have an offense like that? Mm. Well, you know, let's just let's just have the. Let's option. you know what? Let's <laughs> let's be optimistic because mm, I don't know if he I don't know if he can roll like that. Um, I do not believe that is my final answer. Okay, good. Thank I'm. <laughs> it wouldn't like I said, it wouldn't surprise me, but I do not want to believe it. I don't want to. I need to find out who the source is. I well. You know, I mean, I don't roll in their circle, so I, I'm not sure, but you can probably take three Listen, guesses. I don't believe that. Okay, good. Um, you know what? We were speaking during the break about... Uh, Nick, do you believe that? I'm still stuck. Do you believe that? <laughs> Absolutely not. Thank okay, you. all right, Thank good. You. We don't that's, believe that. That's you. good. Let's they have a sports talk show that seems to dominate in the morning, and they just want to yap. Well, no And their doubt. source gave them fodder, but their source really doesn't know. Okay, good. Okay. Well, okay. All, all right. right. I, I solved it. I've been pushed. I've been brought in off the ledge. I solved it. <laughs> Whew. All right. Good. We, we'll get some AP, some carries some this season, along with Geis and Thompson and the new kid, Smallwood, from the Eagles, who hopefully is literally <laughs> give, giving up the Eagles playbook. Let us go. I, look, I mean, let's come on, bro. What you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So we were talking during the break about Redskins playing against the Eagles in season openers. Let's go down the line. 2017, we talked about earlier, a loss 30 to 17. Um, that was on the Sunday. Uh, I think, again, Ryan Kerrigan had a, 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 a fumble recovery for a touchdown or an interception for a touchdown. It was like his first. That was two years ago. 2013, everybody remember that on Monday night? That was the LaRon Landry, like, uh, that thing, that thing. Everybody remember that? Deshaun Jackson literally walking backwards into the end zone. The blowout. Uh, at, yeah, yeah. yeah you, now you, there you go. Me. There you go. It's coming back. 33 to 27. 1996, a loss. 17 to 14, which was a lot closer. That was. 33 to 27 is close. It's one score. No. that I think that was garbage. Yeah. That was a garbage well, score. Well, I mean, I'm just <laughs> telling you the score. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> trust me. I remember that it was a blowout. Uh, 1996. I think that was last year in RFK. 17-14. Um, the last home opener at RFK. And in 1987 was the last time the Redskins beat the Eagles in a season opener. Uh, 34-24, I would be born way. two years later. Oh, stop. Oh, God. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ruin it. Um, how's it how, how important is it for the Redskins to start off well against the Eagles on Sunday? Does starting off well equate to a win? 
I mean, like you said before, it's a result based uh, industry. So yes, but I kind of see where you're going. Come on, come on down. Sure, sure. Down the road. It, it might not necessarily mean a win, but it has to be extremely competitive. Where, say, for instance, you know, Eagles kick a game-winning field goal as time expires. Could you live with that? Sure, as long as the performance was good. But if you're going to throw out trash, we can't have that. So I agree with you on that, a hundred percent. It cannot be a blowout. It cannot be a lopsided game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I definitely think of the two organizations who needs to start with this W more, it's definitely us. Oh, absolutely. Like, hands down. No absolutely. conversation there. Yeah. I, th- for me, the opening game, this year in particular, you got the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. That's a division game. If over the course of the gauntlet to open the first six, the division games are your shots at magic happen, happening to me. And so that's shot one. Like, yes. let's go and see what we're really all about. And there's so many questions around everybody in this organization, whether you go quarterback, wide receiving core, offensive line, like Gruden's job. Like, let's quell all the noise. This is your opportunity. This is it. Because if they don't win this, the fire's going to get even hotter now, and hotter. I know, hotter. They're not, I know they're not favored. Shout out to Vegas. They're uh, minus 10, minus I believe. Minus 10, yeah. correct. Yeah. If it is a one-score seesaw battle – we see a lot of promise. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to live with that, but I'll take it. There, I, you know, it's funny. There are no moral victories. You played to you play to win the game. Um, as a as a fan, you probably would not be as disappointed or depressed. Say, for instance, like I said, they lose by a field goal mm-hmm. late, something like that. Um, so in that aspect, yeah, sure, you take a moral victory. I can see this that. Is so, this is, I I'm can see that. I'm so excited for the season to be back, but this is just making This is, me yeah, so. you're kind of nervous. I'm, uh, very nervous. Yeah. I, I, mm. All right, let's go around the NFL. We'll, we'll bring up the Redskins later in keys to the game. Um, Jadavion Clowney going to Seattle. Uh, Texans trading him away. Uh, now, there's a guy that used his leverage uh, in order to get out of town. Uh, the... Uh, they basically gave up Jacob Martin, Markevius Mingo, and a third rounder. Um, that's kind of not bad for Seattle to give up for a player that could be like, you know, um, that could be like Lawrence Taylor. Not bad at all. Oh, you no, know, casual. Yeah. I'll, you know, it's not bad. Then the other trade that kind of is important that uh, kind of correlates with uh, Trent Williams, Houston ended up trading for uh, Laramie Tunsil. Kenny, is Kenny Stills in Houston? And too? Kenny yeah. Stills, yes. Check out what they gave up. They gave up two first-round draft picks and a second-rounder for Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills. That Two first-round draft picks. Two first-round draft picks. And a second-rounder. And a second-rounder for two players. That could be the reason why our boy D. Hall said it might be sooner rather than later. Because Houston, because would have Houston been possibly would have been that team to give the Redskins a first and a second, or God, if if Houston would have given us two first round draft picks, not one for Trent, two first rounders, bruh, and a second, bruh, Trent, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, uh, I, but look. Bruce said they didn't. They already say Bruce He's, and Jay that the, the Bruce line said he was not do, traded. Bruce, Bruce said he wasn't gonna do Jack. Look, if you're getting – it's sort of like saying, okay, well, I'm going to trade Gilbert Arenas for two first-round picks. What you going to do? Okay, take that back. I'm going to trade – somebody's giving me two first-round picks for Bradley Beal. What you going to do? It's been wonderful. Thank you for your services. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and Beal's the man right now in D.C. Yeah, but he's – yeah. But there's not enough around him to make it matter. Uh, I see what you did there. Booyah. Well, that's done. Houston's off the table. Yeah, so could be the reason why Trent is like, hey, you know what? And and that's his hometown, so that of, of any place that he would, you know, maneuver himself to go, that could be, you know, plan A for him. Not plan B. Forgot, we can't use that. So, uh, <laughs> can't use that. Um, you can use plan B. Uh, it's, I can't. <laughs> In the context of this show. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh... 
Ah, uh, that's very interesting. So here's my only thing on Miami. Obviously, is blowing up, which is fine. All right, great. <laughs> Although I could have a whole nother conversation on what's my guy that just took the head coaching job in Miami from the Patriots, the brother. He's the head coach. Oh now. God, Tom Brian, Flores. There you I say, go. I was gonna say Brian Flores, but that's not right. It might Tom, be Brian Flores. It, it I think it's Brian. I think it's Brian. Tom, Tom Brian, Flores. Is something Flores. It, yes. Yeah, it's Brian Flores. So uh, I just hope that he gets his fair. I don't know the length of his contract that he signed, but I hope that he is given time to work through the mire that are the Miami Dolphins. Because this year is not going to be one to tout as far as records. When was the last time a coach came in? Um, oh, gosh. What's the guy's name in Arizona that just got dropped for? Steve Wilkes? Yes. There you go. Steve Wilkes. One and done. Yep. He was, it was one for him? One and done. Brutal. One and done. Didn't even give the guy a chance. This is a conversation for Miami show. is not giving this cat a chance. Even out of the Belichick tree, where where'd Wilkes come from? Pa- North Carolina, right? Ron Rivera, yeah. Yeah, yeah. North Carolina. Huh? Not giving him a chance. Why would you leave the Patriots? Because it's a head coaching job. job. It's though. a head coaching yeah, job. Yeah, but then they're we're only, getting into his shot at a second head coaching they're, job. They're, which only, is they're only 32 left. But, again, the, the, the overall, you know, the – the impression is is that sure he got a head coaching job, but what did what was he able to do with it when he wasn't given a fair shot? No, his I'm ros- with you. 100%. His roster was his, his roster was literally depleted. You they gotta traded give him- everybody away. He was given Ryan Fitzpatrick the starting. I mean, I'm what? gonna pick him up on my fantasy league just to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you better pick him up early and drop him. Yeah, drop him literally. Early. Like, is this the yeah. game? Do I feel it? Um, the whole black coaches in the NFL is an entirely another conversation That's for another, another day. However, you gotta remember these. Write these I down. would I don't know what his deal is. I'd love to see Brian Flores get a four fair years? shot. You need four you need a, a college a fair lifetime shot. A to fair turn shot. some things around. Yes. All right, but that's I digress. So Laramie Tunsil, Kenny Stills are now Texans. Yep. Jadavion Clowney is a Seahawk. I, the Jadavion Clowney thing, I don't did I miss something? Is he a problem in the locker room? Did I miss something? I mean, he plays when he wants to play. <laughs> okay, injuries. <laughs> right. Well, yes, injuries, but, I, you know, I don't know what the, the perceived motor is for him, but, you know, he's, he's, the guy, he's a guy with unlimited talent but uses it limited amount of times. Cool. And Pete Carroll's going to unlock that? Uh, and of all NFL coaches that could, there are probably three that are in the league that could do that for him. I would say Pete Carroll could be one of them. Okay. And that cachet is running out because he's, you know, 98 years old. Listen, Pete Carroll is a spry. Yes, I'm sorry. My bad. He's he's 98 in real age on his license. <laughs> but just like the guy that was literally trying to change his age on his license, just like they changed sex on the license and this, that, and the other. At this point, Pete Carroll is like probably about 48. That's the way he feels, I imagine. Okay. He I feels d- like I feel, and I'm, I'm 40. No, I'm not. Mm. Okay, well, we'll see what Jadavion Clowney presents on a defense that is already, well, although they took a couple steps back here recently, but will the Seattle Seahawks defense return to their prowess? Maybe they're looking for a move like similar to what the Bears did with uh, Khalil Mack last year and getting him late in the uh, preseason. Um, all right, let's, let's take a quick break. Defense um, just isn't sexy, but go ahead. Defense, pff, I'll take defense. If the Redskins defense can play like they are, um, they're, if Hopefully, the, the, even uh, if the Redskins is the roster are, looks is a steel curtain, the offense is going to give up. Oh, some, come yeah, on! I know, I know. It's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. We'll uh, go through some other DMV uh, sports, and then we'll go over keys to the game to the Eagles. This is Redskins relaunch. We'll be back in thirty seconds. Welcome back to Redskins Relaunch. Uh, we're here wrapping up with Monica McNutt, host of 26 Minutes Podcast uh, with the Redskins with Clint Portis, as well as Buckets, Boards, and Blocks. 
uh, podcast as well. All right, so let's let's dive into some other DMV sports. The uh, the Nats had a good weekend against the Marlins. Um, they did not have a good week series against the uh, the Mets. I was at the game on Monday. It was nine thousand degrees outside. Uh, my boys caught a couple of balls from Juan Soto. Thank you very much. I much appreciate it. Um, but they, the the, Nat, the the Nats lost that game. Um, not a good not a good game for Joe Ross. They won the second game. Um, Max Scherzer making his third start off the DL. Um, he did not have such a good time of it. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? He pit, he started off strong, then r- ran through a rough patch in the fourth inning where the, uh, the Mets scored, I believe, four runs. And then they went up 10-4 to four in the ninth inning after five-run ninth inning. And then something happened. Nick, go ahead and play that clip for us. Here's the set. Three to the Suzuki. Swag on the deep to left field. Way back. Charlie Slows and Dave Jagler. Oh, that was, I mean, that, you I, you know, the, the goosebumps are all on my arms right now. That was such a great call. That was such a good moment. I was watching the game. Um, seven runs in the ninth inning in order to beat the Mets. And then as soon as you, again, we, I referenced this last week, bowling. You, uh, you, you bowl a strike, and then all of a sudden you back it up with a gutter ball. No points. What are you going to do? <laughs> so that's what the Nets did, ended up doing today. They, they lost. Uh, eight to four. So now they have a huge series against the Braves in Atlanta. Um, they have seven games remaining with the Braves. They're down six games to them uh, in the NL East. Number one, they need to be able to hold on to the wild card. Right now, the Nats are uh, up three in the wild card over the Cubs, and they are again six behind the Braves. So they can make up a lot of ground this weekend. They can lose a lot of ground too. So. Um, as as uh, Sean Doolittle said, they're not they're not looking at it going X games out of X games in order to do whatever. There, he said they're just taking it one game at a, at a time, which is absolutely what they should do. Um, also, Rui Hachimura in FIBA, Monica, I like this, um, was doing good leading Team Japan in the FIBA uh, World Championships. Or I'm sorry, World Cup. Um, of course, Japan fell up short, but uh, Rui in in um, in friendlies over there in Australia, who had been doing pretty good. He's showing improvement over there. Konnichiwa. Yes. <laughs> As they would say on Chappelle show, Konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go on further. This is, again, it's a family show. Um, all right, let's move to college football. Look, Florida, um, I last Miami. Fantastic for them. Who cares? But Maryland, <laughs> 79 to zero over Howard. Um, hat tip to Mike Loxley. And the crew over there in College Park, they ended up scoring Jordan McNair's number again against Howard. 79. 79. That's, uh, you know, numbers are everything. And number that was kind of crazy. Um, Howard will have to go back to the drawing board. But Terps now face Syracuse. Um, I know that's a team, a school that you love. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. There you go. I was waiting for it. Um, so uh, we'll see. And, it, and this is a ranked Syracuse coming into ranked College what? Park. Ranked. In the top twenty-five, yeah, yes, well, Syracuse high. football ranked twenty. Nah, I get it. I think they're you know, twenty something. All right, cool. ACC, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. a tough Liberty team last week. Uh, very tough. <laughs> Out I of mean, what are they? The Southern Conference? Like, what is Liberty even in? I don't Liberty know. Jumped up, so they're independent now. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're like Big, Notre Dame. Bad. Uh, yeah. There's some kind of bird. Oh, I don't even hawk. The flames. There you go, flames. The flames. What flames? There's a hawk on their jersey. There's like a bird. They yeah. had their, their coach coaching from a hospital bed. Yeah, Hugh Freeze. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Q yeah, Freeze I mean, making his royal I'm, non-power yeah. five debut. Been been down to Liberty, called a game down there, and it was uh, woo. Uh, it's in where uh, Lynchburg. Lynchburg. Uh, that sounds like a beautiful place. I not mean, to go. I was excited to go. So here's the deal: Loxley is in the same boat for me as Brian Flores. Love Mike Loxley in that he's a DMV really guy. Really, you think I he's in trouble? I don't. He got the same deal Edsel got apparently. I think it's five years. It might be four, but. <laughs> 
and he's got tons of lovely incentives. And my cousin just medically retired from that team, but he's still on the roster. And the parents and players seem to be enthralled with him. He's a great guy. I think turning that program around off of the tragedy, Jordan McNair, God rest his soul, bless his family, the whole bit, is a task in the Big Ten. Yes. And Maryland is not a – look, let's get this – everybody get it straight. Everybody knows Maryland's a basketball school. Fact. Point blank, period. Okay? Maryland is not a football school. Maybe it used to be back in Bobby Ross and Curly Bird and the whole nine. It is not anymore a football school. So in order for Loxley to turn this – turn that football program around, he's probably got, of any coach, probably the chops to do it. Because A, he is from that program. He knows the area. He could recruit his tail off. He knows everybody in this area. I mean, everybody, all the coaches. He literally knows all the parents. It does not mean that kids want to be there. No, they don't. But of some of the kids that he could get to go there, like a la the kids down the street at DeMatha, and, the, and guess who's on his stash, staff? Coach Elijah Brooks, former coach of DeMatha. You would probably see some DeMatha kids going there. Some kids from Damascus, like Jake Funk, and some of those other kids. Jake Funk ain't graduated yet? N- no. Jake Funk that I covered when we were when together? We were, yes, uh, yes, he's still there. I've not even gone that long. He's, okay. yeah, he's got to yeah. be a senior. I, I hope so. I hope so, too. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's, you know, wow. he took a year off. He took a year sabbatical. <laughs> Uh, you never know. You never know. But uh, kudos to kudos to Loxley. Uh, again, they face Syracuse this week. Um, we'll see what happens. Where is it? It's College Park. Yep. Yeah. They can be 2-0. and oh. I'm going to be in New York. I'm not going. They, they could be 2-0. They could be 2-0. Oh. Oh. They could, they be, could be 2 and oh. <laughs> Syracuse plays one Clemson one. next week, so it might be a trap game for, for Syracuse. Nah. I, th- I think we got to look at how we're looking at trap game. I think Syracuse is well prepared for Clemson and know they need to get every win leading into that game. Mm, <laughs> they might be getting ready for Clemson already. We're going to see. We, Shout out to the Terps. Certainly rooting see. for Loxley. Yeah, Certainly absolutely. rooting for Loxley. Absolutely. All right, keys to the game for the Redskins. Let's get back to them. Um, what are your keys to the game as far as attacking this Doug Peterson, Philadelphia, Carson Wentz, Fletcher Cox, all of these, you know, Sitting on rings, Philadelphia Eagles. I know, sitting on rings. Boom. Um, My only key is not Carson Wentz over. Get to Carson Wentz. There you go. That's all I got. Again, over, under on the sacks by the Redskins. Because they're going, if the Redskins want to win, they're going to have to get to Carson Wentz. Well, the Eagles offensive line is in the body issue. (laughs) You read that stuff? I mean, it's been all over uh, Twitter. Uh, I, I know can't who was name on any it. Of those guys. I know who was on it. Liz Cambage. Fine. Woo-hoo! Come on, Liz. Oh Lord Jesus. And shout out to Nancy Lieber McLean, defying age. Her abs are sick. Okay. Sixty one. But it. Uh, let's it's go fine. back to Liz. All right, that's fine. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she is big, tall, sexy Woo! Liz. Come on, sis. Okay. That all woman right. gorgeous. Besides the offensive line being in the body magazine, I cannot name any of them. Which is, I'm. I just cannot name any of them. But that's fine. Uh. <laughs> A whole offensive line in the box. They got Lane Johnson. Thank you. One of the best left tackles Peters? in the league. Peters is old, isn't he? Is I was going to say, whoever they are, they can't be bad because they're putting Carson Wentz back out there. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> However, I do want to believe that Jonathan Allen and company are young, spry, yeah. hungry, tenacious. Yeah. Uh, front seven. Yeah. It's going to cause some problems. I'm going to go three. Okay, over, okay. So over or under? Okay. Let me see. I'm going three. I got three. three. So okay. what's, what's the over under? What's the number? I was going to go five. I'm going under five. Say five. If they have five or more sacks, they might win this game. I just don't. And it doesn't have to be a f- f- strip fumble or anything like that, but it, Wait, five I, sacks. I believe our defense is good. I believe our defense has improved. I believe the Skins defense is going to be nasty. I also know that the Eagles have been to the Super Bowl in the last three years. Yeah. With largely the same crew. And I don't remember Nick Foles ever taking a bunch of hits. Did I miss that? Am I, am I blanking on something? And before Carson got hurt, like, I don't, I just don't. The fact that I can't remember anything about their offensive line is probably a good thing in yeah, this instance. Yeah, that is a good thing. Yeah. Right? Like, they're doing their job, and then they're posing naked. That's yeah. fine. Okay, I mean, no, that's not fine with me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, all right. So, yeah, got to get to, got to get to uh, Wentz. Also, since we now know that Geis is getting a bulk of the carries, we don't know for sure, but continue. Mm, I, 
It's got to be a 120 plus rushing yard, whether it be him got or his first performance team. back. No, oh, I'm okay. just talking about the set of backs, whether it be uh, Chris Thompson, Geis, or Peterson. Okay. It has to be 120 total coming out that backfield. And then we can talk about, I mean, at that point, Case just doesn't have to throw up on himself, and you might be in line for something special. All right, I'm with it. I also am going to challenge our rookie wide receiver. Mm, both of them? McLaurin. Got, who's the other one? Can, um, Harmon. Harmon, yeah. Uh, sure, I'm going to challenge both of them, but particularly I'd like to see McLaurin respond. Yes, Just absolutely. because you're coming from the Ohio State. Oh, oh! You said that with a little bit of. Mm. I mean, what you about, bro? <laughs> like you got your your man that you, did he play with Zeke? Is he old enough to have overlap Zeke? I don't no, know. I don't think so. Um, but uh, let's go. Let's okay, go. Yeah, come on, come on. Put that look, pedigree. He's gonna have to step up. Another guy on that receiver core is gonna have to step up. Is uh, Trey Quinn? Yeah, you you got some time in. Let's go. Yeah, but isn't it between all of our receivers? There's only like. Something ridiculous low number so, of yeah, something. It, somebody tweeted out, uh, the Redskins wide receiving core has only 58 games of experience. Yeah, there you go. And guess who has 54? Paul Richardson. Hey. So literally, <laughs> there are only four games among like six guys. So Listen, you're like. Here's, the, here's where we can, experience can be overblown. Let's go. You're playing with house money. you naive. You think you are better than whoever you're facing. Then come on, let's show it. Hopefully. We don't have to let experience be a uh, stamp. I 1,000% agree on that. If you if you got if you got it, show it, show and prove. At this point, it's now time to show and prove. They no more preseason. Up. Exactly. They no more preseason. Lace up just it's, like we got it's, up. it's time to show and prove. All right. So defense is the name of the game. Let's let's hope they get over five sacks. That might help to bring a win for the Washington Redskins. Monica, it's been a blast. We Always. have got to get out of here because we're not doing any more overtime. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. Time we to don't. Go. Yeah, they they cut back on the overtime. Um, so we, we got to get out of here. We got to get Robert Burton checking in saying, hey, Burton. Suzuki, you will be. Uh, well, tell us what you got coming up next. Miss McNutt. Me? Uh, yeah. Next, uh, I'm actually headed to New York this weekend. For well, some, uh, next as in like the next 24 hours. Uh, what's oh t- next 24 hours? Sports talk. Hey. Yes, on News Channel 8. <laughs> With my guy, Robert Burton. Can't wait to play Cash It or Trash It. Talk to Irvin from Southeast. Oh, and whoever yes. else calls in, we'll have a good time. Irvin from Southeast. Um, it's, unfortunately, it's now WGLA 24-7. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did I say the wrong thing? It's all right. I have it's a special it. relationship you know with what? Sinclair. Yeah, yes. You do. Well, number one, it's still on 8. It's on a Channel 8. Channel 8, WJLA 24-7. 24-7 News. Um, all right, so that'll do it. That'll that'll do it for us on Redskins Relaunch. Listen, you can catch each and every archived episode of Redskins Relaunch on DMVStream.com. Also, check us out on our Facebook page, DMVStream.com, as well as uh, on Twitter, DMVStream.com, as well as myself, Sports Talk NC8. Check us out there. I will look you if you call. I will respond. It's like go go. They don't call on Twitter. I mean, they could. Mm. No, not yet. Don't do the DMs. I don't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we don't get he down. Murray. We don't do. We don't. We don't do the. We we don't get down in the DMs. We don't get down on the DMs. Who sings that song? It's some it's old. young young Irv. It's old. Young Irv Gotti, Yo Gotti, no, no, no. somebody wanted to <laughs> show my age. Thank you it's very much. Down um, in the DMs. Yeah, that's the song. You Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. All right. With that said, we are. That's a wrap on this Redskins relaunch. <laughs> I'm Winston Hilton. We'll see you next week for hopefully we're talking about a win and we're previewing the Dallas Cowboys. We want to hear we want Dallas. We want Dallas. We want Dallas. We are out.